So we got an enormous amount of work to be done. I look forward to work with you, with the American people, and standing up. Independent Senator Bernie Sanders is preparing for a new fight within his new role as the chairman of the Senate Health Committee. So in this video, I will show you a recent uh, video he put out discussing this. I will also get to a lot of the greed around the pharmaceutical industry. I'll get to public polling on how surprisingly people feel about this issue across the aisle. And I'm also going to highlight here in a second a piece that Bernie put out in Fox News. So first here. So this is uh, his new fight. You see here Axios drug companies brace for Chairman Bernie. So I'm going to get to a quote in a minute here from an insider in the pharmaceutical industry and how they're feeling about this. But uh, first, let's highlight this this Fox News piece, because this is something that I think Bernie Sanders does better than any other politician in terms of someone who's actually on the left, is their attempt to try and reach out to a larger audience and really bring people in, educate them, ensure that you know we're all on the same page in terms of corporate uh, greed. So this is a great example of that. Greedy pharma firms rip off Americans while Pfizer, Moderna swim in profits. Five of the largest U.S. pharma firms totaled $80 billion in profits, but millions of Americans can't afford medicine. So Bernie has had a, a number of uh, op-eds in Fox News now. It's, you know, it's hard to qualify you know, how, how, what kind of impact this has, but you have to assume... It's touching a maybe a, a different audience, at least a little bit, than um, who Bernie Sanders is is uh, normally talking to. But I just want to highlight a few paragraphs from this because he makes, of course, great points. Writing here, there's a lot of discussion about how divided our nation is and on many issues that is absolutely true. But on one of the most important matters facing our country, the American people, Democrats, Republicans, independents, progressives, conservatives could not be more united, and that is in the need to take on the unprecedented corporate greed of the pharmaceutical industry and to substantially lower the outrageously high price of prescription drugs. How is it that in Canada and other major countries, the same medicines manufactured by the same companies sold in the same bottles are available for a fraction of the price that we pay in the U.S.? The answers can be summed up in three words. Follow the money. He ends on here saying, over the past 25 years, the pharmaceutical industry has spent $8.5 billion on lobbying and over $745 million on campaign contributions to buy politicians. Incredibly, last year, the drug companies hired over 1,700 lobbyists, including the former congressional leaders of both major political parties, over three pharmaceutical industry lobbyists for every member of Congress. Now, before I get to more on this, I just want to address the, the vaccine skeptic audience for a minute, in case any of you are watching this. Because many of you may, may see this and think, well, this is the issue. You have all of this money going to these big pharma companies. That's why they're pushing the vaccine on people to make all this money. The issue isn't the medicine. The issue isn't the vaccines themselves. The issue is who holds the intellectual property? Who is making the money? So despite the fact that public money and tax dollars have gone into creating the COVID vaccine, the vast majority of medicines, the actual uh, benefit, the actual profit is going to massive corporations. That is the issue. I'm going to get to more on that later on in this video, but that is the issue with the system here. So if you actually had the public hold on to these patents, to this intellectual property, fund all the research, create these, these medicines, then you would have much lower cost, it, in most cases free medicine, because of the public investment in, into the creation of it. And that is a net benefit for society, for people to be able to have easy access to those medicines, to those vaccines. So again, the issue is not the actual vaccine itself or the medicine itself. It is who is benefiting from the process. And right now, massive corporations hold complete control over the process, despite the fact that public research goes into creating these medicines. Now, let's get to Bernie's video here. So he put this out uh, a few days ago saying, as the new chairman of the Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, or HELP, I'm going to do everything I can to protect the needs of the struggling working class. So check this out. As the new chairman of the Health, Education, Labor, and Pension Committee, I'm going to do everything I can to protect the needs of a struggling working class in this country. And that means we're gonna take on the greed of the pharmaceutical industry, uh, who charge us the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs and lower those prices. Uh, we're gonna expand healthcare 
in this country, our eventual goal is health care for all through a Medicare for all single payer program. We're going to deal with the crisis in child care in this country. Outrageous that working families have to pay $15,000 a year to get their kids uh, into child care. Uh, we're going to deal with the issue of student debt. We'll deal with the fact that so many of our teachers are fleeing the profession at a time when we need the best public school system that we possibly can have. So we've got an enormous amount of work to be done. I look forward to work with you, with the American people, and standing up to powerful special interest and start developing policy that works for all, not just the 1%. Thanks. So before I get to how further into how the, these special interests are gaming the system, here is a reaction from uh, somebody within that industry saying here, I have no doubt there will be tough hearings with people from industry being forced to testify, subpoenaed to testify, etc. A pharmaceutical industry source said, and I think it's going to be a real challenge. So they, of course, do not like when uh, there is a focus on the amount of greed within their industry, it is going to be a challenge for them, but largely just PR-wise. Because of the divided Congress, you're not going to have any uh, any actual um, change passed, at least not within the next two years. But uh, Axios writes here, the important upside for the industry is that with the divided Congress, Sanders has basically no ability to get his most sweeping ideas signed into law at the moment. What he will have is the use of the bully pulpit and the public relations battle. So we'll get to questioning how effective or not effective, but how necessary this PR battle is currently. But first here, it's also important to to separate, you know, the two parties here. Of course, there is a lot of crossover in terms of just the amount of money poured in from private health care into both Democrats and Republicans. But when it comes down to it, it is clear, at least when it comes to the ability to potentially have some progress, where uh, the lines are. So this is from uh, this piece from August, uh, last August. Senate Republicans blocked the $35 cap on out-of-pocket spending on insulin for patients enrolled in private insurance in the reconciliation package. Why it matters, the drug costs eight times more in the U.S. than 32 other high-income nations according to a 2020 study commissioned by the Health and Human Services Department. So Republicans blocked it for private insurance, but it got passed for patients on Medicare. Showing you again the need to move to Medicare for all. Because once the corporate interests are taken out of the equation, there's no reason to to deny people the health care that they need, which is also why it's important to point out a public option is not good enough. A public option still, you still keep the private interests within the system. You still keep all the lobbying within that system. You have to completely remove private industry from the health care system. Otherwise, you're going to have this continued encroachment within uh, public health. But in terms of the PR aspect of this, how necessary is that? Because a lot of people already agree and already experience this, experience the greed of the of big pharma. So this is from the Kaiser Family Foundation, their uh, recent uh, study on this. About three in 10 say they haven't taken their medicine as prescribed due to costs. So of course, that is an ongoing issue. In the US, an estimated this from Gallup, 18 million can't pay for needed drugs. And about 8 in 10 across parties say pharma profits are a major contributing factor to prescription drug costs. So taking a look deeper at the this data here, profits made by pharmaceutical companies. So Democrats, 82% say that is a major factor in contributing to the price of prescription drugs. And 80% of Republicans also agree. So you see almost parity here on the awareness that Profits play a major piece in the cost of pharmaceuticals. Yet, <laughs> you saw the result of what gets passed or what doesn't get passed because of Republicans. Now, again, the issue, of course, Democrats as well, they had Congress for uh, uh, you know Biden's first two years, did not pass Medicare for all, was not an interest of Joe Biden. But even just, you know, bare minimum stuff here, not even bare, I mean, we're talking like bottom of the barrel, just like basic. How about a cap on insulin? 
even that for patients and private insurance does not get passed, despite the fact that Republicans understand that profits play a major piece. So there is practically no connection between policy and public opinion. And that is across the board, not just healthcare. We're talking every, as long as there is corporate interest involved somehow, there is no connection between public policy in terms of its uh, potential to maybe impact profits for massive corporations and the policy that gets passed. Because of course, massive corporations have a much uh, easier and larger sway or a larger impact on Congress because of the amount of money and lobbies they have, as I showed you earlier with Big Pharma. Now, it's also worth mentioning here, I'm going to get to more on this in a bit, but um, so people also think the cost of research and development play a major factor in the price of prescription drugs, which actually is not true. So Democrats, 66% think that's a major piece. 72% of uh, Republicans think that's a major uh, piece. It's not. Yes, there is R&D, of course, but a lot of the initial research into a lot of the medicine, and I'm going to get to shortly here uh, just how much research, but a lot of the initial research into these medicines, as I mentioned earlier, is from public. Is universities researching into this? They're the ones that start the ball rolling on a lot of these medicines, a lot of these vaccines, and you have big pharma sweeping in and uh, getting exclusivity rights for uh, decades to make the profits while people have to pay more money, even though their tax dollars already went into investing into the research for these medicines. So just another thing worth mentioning here from Gallup, millions in U.S. lost someone who couldn't afford treatment. You likely, if you're an American, uh, maybe know someone that was impacted by this. U.S. tax dollars, here we go. Funded this from the Institute for New Economic Thinking. U.S. tax dollars funded every new pharmaceutical in the last decade. Every new pharmaceutical <laughs> was funded by U.S. tax dollars. So we're talking, you know, a lot of the initial research into uh, these pharmaceuticals. They write here, we are concerned about how the financialized biopharmaceutical industry balances creation of shareholder value and the value of, uh, and the value resulting from improving health outcomes. Studies over the past decades consistently demonstrate that increasing co-payments result in lower utilization of health resources and compromise health outcomes. Thus, corporations that seek to maximize shareholder value by aggressively pricing their products will necessarily reduce the health value resulting from these products. This, in turn, reduced the health impact of the NIH funding, the public funding, that contributed to the, their discovery and development. So they're basically saying here that because of the for-profit motive within the pharmaceutical industry, that is having a negative impact on the potential positive impact that their uh, medicines may have if people were actually able to afford and use them. So again... The for-profit motive has should have no place within healthcare. Healthcare is a need. To put a price on that is simply disgusting. And how this issue can be discussed in any other way or even debated to me is insane. This should not be a debate. This is fact. We can see the for-profit motive has a direct negative impact on people's lives. Yet there is still somehow a debate over how much uh, power private industry should have over healthcare. It's it's ridiculous. So a couple last things here on these points. In terms of uh, big pharma's hold over this stuff, so pharma companies hold patents, licenses guaranteeing their intellectual property rights on new medicines. This means no one else is allowed to produce the drug without their permission for the life of the patent, which is 20 years in most countries. And in many cases, this isn't just a U.S. issue. So you have the TRIPS agreement, which... Uh, I discussed a lot more when, when discussing the initial rollout of the vaccines and how uh, Big Pharma wanted to comp complete control over the uh, the research and the, the ability to produce uh, the vaccine. But they write here, the intellectual property system is enforced by governments worldwide under the TRIPS agreement, which is one of the key documents of the World Trade Organization. Some states are made ardent enforcers and others. The U.S. is particularly well known as a strong defender of companies' intellectual property. The EU is not far behind. Last thing here, 
An analysis of two big pharma giants shows that Pfizer only developed 10 of 44 best-selling drugs in-house. So 23%. And Johnson & Johnson only developed two out of 18, 11%. The innovation, quote-unquote, largely happens in university and government labs or in those smaller research companies. I mean, it's all right here. The amount of money that is put into the research from the public into these vaccines, into these medicines, yet you have these massive companies benefiting, it shows you the inherent rot in the system. 